two-time U.S. Open nine-ball champion. Dynamite, Darren Appleton. I came from the mud. Looks good. Looks good. It is good. The most important one was winning the World Ten Ball Championship because it's everyone's dream to be world champion. Could go into the edges. Grinder, fighter, play with a lot of emotion, a lot of art. Hello, pool fans, welcome back. And today we're going to go to another back to basics edition. But today, something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to play a rack of tembo. Right then, guys, so let's go to the break. So I like to just put the cue ball a little bit to the right there, put my weight on my front foot. Try and keep my left arm locked if possible, just below center of the cue ball. But on my backswing, make sure I keep my eyes on the cue ball. Try and hit that one ball really square. So I've hit a really good break. Made my target ball. Nearly made that four railer what I spoke about. I made one of my target balls, which was the nine ball. Got a pretty good split. So first thing I do. Survey the table, and you're always thinking three shots in front playing rotation. There's no problem balls. The only little slight problem ball would be the five. But it might go in the side pocket, so that makes life a lot easier. It slightly goes in. It's not easy. But the table's laying pretty nicely, but still need to be careful because the two to the three can be a little bit tricky. So I'm thinking about the two to the three, not so much the one. I'm thinking, where do I need to be on the two to get to the three? And then after the three, you've got the four. So you're always thinking two, uh, three shots in front playing rotation. So first of all, I like to get somewhere around here with a cue ball. I can't do a lot with a cue ball with a one box. I've got to make sure I make the one. So I'll play this just a high ball, just a touch of left. Didn't want to kiss the seventh. So I caught that one ball a little bit thinner than what I would like, but it's okay. It's actually turned out pretty decent. So here for the two, I can play with follow and go two rails. And if I land here for the three, that's pretty good. If I land straight, even better. But landing short is not a bad thing here because there's a lot of table to play for to get to the purple four, which is after the three. So I'm going to play a high, high right here. Try and put as good a stroke on as I can as possible. Wouldn't like to kiss the five. Or kiss the five over the side would have been okay. But I thought I was going to kiss it in such a way it would have landed on the point. Then you're in trouble. Anyway, I've come a little bit further than what I would like. Well, I think I've just about enough space to come round the back of the tent. And come here for the purple five. So again, I'm thinking about the purple to the five now. Not so much the three. I think I'm okay to clear that ten. Coming off three rails. So high dealy. Coming short's okay. Straight's not a disaster. And, and even coming coming high long is okay also. Because the five goes in this pocket. So the key, key really is this rack. Is this shot right here. So top right. Top right just to make sure I miss that ten. Well, if I don't play any English at all there, there's a good chance of kissing that 10. Right, I've got like a slight angle on the 5 here. So I've got two options to draw back, but I'm sort of aiming towards the 8, so I don't like that. I'll go forward off two rails, maybe three, for the 5 in the top, which I do like. So just stay, stay uh, keeping out of trouble is the key. And, keeping, uh, and giving myself a lot of options. So I write again. Caught the purple a little bit fat. That's why I flicked the 10 ball there. But it's worked out okay. If I just stop it and leave the cue ball there, that's no good. Because I'd be straightening on the 6. I'd have to draw that ball back for the 7. Things can go wrong. So I could draw it and come here. Don't really like that. I'll go forward. Go forward with the cue ball and make life as easy as possible. And that's the option I like. So just roll this five ball in. Cheat the pocket slightly so I'll keep the cue ball off the rail. So now, just getting good on the seven ball. 
I've got to be careful with this eight ball, so I'm going to purposely land short on the seven. So I'm just going to use a one rail. Just like that. Make sure I don't go behind the eight. Got more angle. I've got too much angle where I can't just draw it and come here. So I'm going to have to come around the back of the 10 here. So again, got to be very careful. Because it's not easy now to get on the 8. So I'm thinking, do I come this way? Try and load it up with loads of spin and come right there. Or do I come this way? Which is a little bit more dangerous. Because if you don't hit it good, you can scratch off the 10 or scratch straight. Or I could go follow off three rails and play for the eight in the side. So it all depends how you're feeling. And believe it or not, I'm thinking, I think I like that option. Yeah, that ten ball is just a little bit scary there. So I'm going to play this with follow and a touch of left. Just like that. Hopefully it slows down. So I got into that a lot more than I would have liked. But it's turned out okay. Got a slight angle, can just just stun over nicely for the 10. But again, I think the way I played it, I just give myself more options and less chance of things, bad things happening. But stunned over nicely for the straight in 10 ball. Right then guys, I've come back to that 7 ball, because uh, uh, I think a lot of you are thinking, why did I go that way? It was the safest option, there was no scratches going 1, 2 rails, 3 rails with, with, with top left. I, I take all the pockets out to play, but also I've got all this space to play, so, to play for, so anywhere here would have been good. Where my initial thought was to come around the back of the 10, but again, if you don't catch it good, you can catch the 10. But also you might scratch or you might leave the cue ball on the side rail. So that's why I didn't really like that option because it's a very touchy-feely shot. And sometimes that happens. Yeah, so, you, so as you could see, like, very dangerous shot. And even if I hit it really good, if I don't hit it as good as I want to, then you can bring the scratch into play. Or you can land very awkward like this situation here and you're leaving yourself a tough shot. And then the other option wants to come this side of the 10 ball, which is probably even more dangerous. Because again, it's a very touchy-feely shot. And over and over again, you see people do that. And I've done it myself. I've seen so many players do it. So uh, the, the shot I played was the safest way to play it. Uh, taking all the scratches out of play and guaranteeing myself a shot on the eight ball. So, so always figure out your percentages and uh, stay out of trouble. So that's your rack of ten ball. Uh, so uh, yeah, thinking three shots in front all the time. Uh, got a nice split of the balls, so I couldn't have asked for much better. And uh, yeah, sort of happy with that. Uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.